information and balance. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Jerry Mosley, and uh, <clears throat> This case, the Esper versus Gascon case, uh, it relies, <clears throat> and it's going to rely, a great deal on, on the Supreme Court case that came down in 2003, Lawrence versus Texas. Have any of you all heard of that case, Lawrence versus Texas, you have? Yes, several of you have. Uh, that is a very, very important case for anybody interested in personal liberties. Uh, there's a Texas statute that outlawed sodomy between people of the same sex. And the U.S. Supreme Court said that statute is unconstitutional. You cannot do that. And the reasoning of the court was very, very important for all of us. The court said these two petitioners, they are two men, they were having sex, and they have a constitutional right of privacy to engage in this intimacy. The court said sexual behavior is the most private kind of conduct. And the U.S. Constitution uh, protects your privacy. There is a lot of very good language in Lawrence. There's also heated debate, of course, amongst lawyers about what it really means and what the, the fundamental message was, but there is a great deal of very, very helpful language uh, in that case, and the factual basis of the case is very important, too, because the facts of that case were that there were two men who were caught by the brave men in blue of Houston, Texas, having sex. There was no evidence that they had a, quote, relationship. That's a big issue when lawyers are, are arguing about this case. Does it just protect relationships, like quasi-marital relationships? Or does it protect sexual privacy? Well, the facts of the case are that the only thing before the court was sexual act between these two men, and there's reason to believe that it basically was a one-night stand. And that's what the court was protecting, even though, in its opinion, Justice Kennedy, uh, who just likes to do this kind of stuff, goes on for pages and pages and pages talking about how wonderful relationships are, and the, you know, the bonding nature of sex and whatnot. We can't forget about the actual facts that were before the court. Um, there's a great deal to talk about, and, and, and uh, I'll be delighted to have any of your questions about this case, but let me just say a couple of words about an issue that comes up very often. Whenever you talk to somebody about privacy, and prostitution in the same breath, you're going to get an automatic response. But prostitution is business. It's commerce. You're paying for it. When you take your wallet out, it can't be private. Business is over here. Privacy is over here. They just can't meet. And it's true that we don't have any case law precedent that says prostitution is a matter of privacy. This is cutting edge litigation, folks. This is what civil rights looks like before the issue becomes popular and accepted. Now what we have to keep in mind is that there's a great deal of commerce that's private. Your bank account and your bank information is private. If you go to the pharmacist and buy contraceptives, you are paying money and you are getting contraceptives. The Supreme Court is very clear that you have a right to privacy to do just that, to buy contraceptives. The, the, the biggest example is the right to terminate pregnancy. And both the US Supreme Court and California Supreme Court have said, 
A woman has a right to terminate her pregnancy because it is a privacy right. It is a privacy right. And I think most people have noticed that if a woman terminates her pregnancy, she's got to get out her wallet and pay for it. That's commerce. The doctor is in business. He provides that service as a business. It is commerce and it is private. There was another Texas statute. I don't know what it is with the Texas legislature, but they, they decided to outlaw the selling of sexual aids. And they're talking about dildos primarily. It, it is baffling what legislators think they are doing with all the problems in the world. They're saying, hey, what about those dildos? Let's outlaw them. Let's, let's give people a criminal record because they're buying a dildo. I, I, let me go. The, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, the, the appellate court in the federal judicial system, got a hold of that statute and said, that's unconstitutional. Now that's not the Supreme Court, and not all courts agree on this. But the Fifth Circuit relied on Lawrence and said, this is a matter of privacy. But it's business. The court said, look, even in the Texas, Texas legislature said, we're not outlawing the use of Dilma. You can use it all you want, you just can't buy it. And the court said, don't give me that stuff. If you outlaw the purchase, then you are either outlawing the use or you are burdening that use. And that is you are burdening a right to privacy and you can't do that. You cannot play around with people's right to privacy. In Kerry, the US Supreme Court looked at a statute that said, when you're buying non-prescription contraceptives, not, not prescriptions, you still have to go to a licensed pharmacist. So basically they were just making it more difficult to buy contraceptives, but you can still buy them. You can still go elsewhere to buy them. The Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that. You can't come in here and say, you're just outlawing the payment of money. You are burdening that right to privacy. You don't get to do it. We're going to have a lot to rely on whenever, and we will get it, and we have already gotten it, the opposition that they're just outlawing, outlawing payment. Just commerce, we're not outlawing, and, and this goes to my, my next point, the last, the, my last point here, where they will say, we're not outlawing sex. Oh Jesus, we wouldn't want to do that. And we're not outlawing relationships, we're just outlawing commerce. Now, you gotta think this through. The assumption that the state makes is when they look at a, at a client and a sex provider, and they say, there's nothing unique going on there. The customer can get whatever he's getting there anywhere else for free. So when we ban this interaction, the only thing we're banning is commerce. What we need to understand is that people who don't know what they're talking about should shut up. <laughs> now, there are all kinds of relationships. And there are all kinds of relationships between customers and prostitutes. There is research done by people who actually know what they're doing and do not have a political ax to grind. They research postings. These postings were men posting comments about call groups. Great deal of them are not talking about the sex act. They're talking about the emotional quality of this relationship. Some of them even discuss with other men how to quote, break up with a call girl that they have been seeing for a long time. There was a study in Los Angeles County. 49% of the clients of the studied call girls were regular clients. 
That's, that's half, half of the regular clients. 45% of those regular clients had had a relationship with the call girl for over a year. That's a relationship, folks. Uh, Maggie McNeil writes a blog, The, the Honest Courtesan. Any of y'all seen that blog? She married one of her clients. Uh, you know, even Scalia would recognize that as a relationship, bless his heart. <laughs> <laughs> she, provided, she, she talks about provisions of sex to severely disabled men. Severely disabled men. Man comes to her for sex, and it is irrational to talk about banning that relationship because that man can get sex anywhere else. Um, so we have a lot to say. It's not going to be easy. It is a civil rights battle. The time is now to fight it, and we have a lot to say. Elle? Thank you for that.